One question is designed to give subscribers valuable insights on how executive leaders in college athletics think about key issues on their respective campuses, in their departments, or within their leagues and conferences. Greetings, this is Ty Brown, and welcome to One Question, where we highlight executive leaders in college athletics. Today, we listened to a clip from an interview I'd had with Tommy McClellan, who's the athletics director at Louisiana Tech. He's talking about his Louisiana Tech Athletics Leadership Institute and giving some of the details on the conversation. Of course, this was a long clip, so it didn't make the original conversation, but I'm presenting it here because I think it's very educational and it's very interesting in what they're doing down at Louisiana Tech. Let's listen to it. It's staff and coaches. And so what we do is, uh, matter of fact, uh, we have our first uh, department-wide meeting September the 9th. And uh, in that meeting, it kind of goes full circle. We'll actually present what last year – first of all, let me back up. So if I back up last year at this that, that meeting, we basically put out a, a, a call. Hey, if you're interested in being in this institute, we're selecting 12 people. And so you have to be – you can't be on my senior staff. It's basically mid to upper management, but not executive. And then you can't be a head coach. And so the, the coach can nominate somebody. Uh, I, we can nominate people. And last year we got a great response. We got, um, you know, well, well more than 12, maybe double than that. And what we do is we go through and we want it to be diverse. We want a balance of coaches and non-coaches. So it might be the assistant AD for tickets. It might be the, you know, top assistant at men's basketball. It might be uh, the head strength and conditioning coach. Uh, it might be the, you know, assistant track and field coach. And so it's just a cross-section of people. We want diverse in gender. We want diverse in race. And so we, we really kind of carve through that to create a, a diverse pool of 12 people, coaches, non-coaches, and such. And these are people that we – and we want them, and somewhat a lot like league we want them to say, hey, I want to be – a head coach in my sport. I want to be an AD or an executive in this level. And so then they have to apply and they write why they're interested or if they've been nominated, why they accept. And then as a senior staff, we pick, like I said, so that we name the institute. And then we've partnered with our School of Industrial Psychology. They come in the first, really the first two lessons we do basically, it's quarterly, but actually we'll wind up meeting six times. But uh, it kind of gets a little tighter in the spring. But the first two times that they come in is really about helping them to understand what it's like a leadership assessment. So the the School of Industrial Psychology has an aptitude test that they come in and they take, and it's pretty extensive, and then they get their results, and then we work with them on what that means. Like, oh, you're, you know, this is your personality. This is the way you lead. This is the way you want to lead. Now, how does that affect how you coach? How does that affect how you lead a staff or whatever? And so kind of self-awareness of where they are. And then the back end of those same meetings, the first one we do is me. I come in there and because these are people that don't necessarily know every, you know, they don't understand all the moving pieces. So I do a PowerPoint on how an athletic department works you know, internal, external departments, sports, why is the marketing department important, why is the ticket office important, and really kind of educate them on the global picture of how an athletic department works and how everyone fits into it. And then the next week, they they kind of get the results of their aptitude test, and then the uh, we bring the VP or executive VP from his uh, campus to come on, and he talks about everything the university is doing research and how athletics dovetails into that and uh, the enrollment growth and what the projects are going on campus and really gives a broad view of our whole campus and how it fits into the community. That one's been one of the most popular uh, lessons that we've done because people just have no idea. They're here, you know, if they're assistant coach, they're just worried about their little recruiting right, area. their job at the high and level. They, that's they, it, right? Uh, yeah, they have no idea that we're like curing cancer or whatever. <laughs> you know, they, don't, they don't understand any of that stuff. And so it's really refreshing to see them engage in that. And then... We had a donor that I visit with that gives us $10,000. And so then we come in and we say, okay, now we're going to put you into groups. And we subdivide them into two groups and we give them a challenge. Kind of like Shark Tank, but not quite. And they're all competitive. They're in athletics. So last year the challenge was you have $10,000. It's real cash. We will spend it and use it. It's not fake. Break into these two groups 
and y'all are tasked with helping to solve mental health issue within student athletes. So whether that's developing an app, whether that's hiring a counselor, whether that's programming, whether that's you know propaganda that you pass out or whatever, you guys go do your research. And we gave them our faculty athletic rep, who actually is a dean of the psychology school, and we gave them uh, the counseling person on campuses. We gave them four or five contacts, and said we didn't give them a lot of parameters, and said go. So then they met uh, a couple more times on their own, and then the president, me, and our SWA and the senior staff sat like a panel, and they came in and presented. They were all dressed up. They had their powerpoints, and they showed us how they were going to spend that ten thousand dollars to address and help with the mental health issues that are going on in our student athlete population. And so basically, in essence, we really didn't pick a winner. <laughs> we combined. That's what we decided to do this year. So we're combining all of the components that we liked and that we can actually do. And then that group, they graduated, they got a certificate, we gave them, you know, recognition. But they will then come in front on September 9th now, in a couple weeks, and they will present to the entire department what they presented to us, why they did it, and how excited they are about it, and here's the implementation. And so now, you know, I'm getting – because if you're the football coach and you're like, I don't really want to do a, you know, you know, whatever. Like, I don't know if I want my coach – my kids wearing these orange bracelets or whatever. Well, he's going to hear, like, from one of his coaches that's on staff, like, hey, this is how we got there and this is really important. Now we've got buy-in from everybody. And so it's been really cool. Our president has adopted it. They've created a Louisiana Tech Institute to do a similar thing. He gave that their challenge this year was like a town and gown. How can we better, how can we get better relationships between the city and the school? And, uh, and he kind of said it was a similar model, but it's been, it's been fun, um, to kind of see that and, and really to see like these coaches and, and, and how, how well they work together, this diverse group of people. How long How long have you been doing that? This, this last year was the first year that we did that. We started the, two years before that, the leadership council with the student athletes. And uh, this was the first year that we, we did this institute. And uh, I've had several people, because we tweeted out when we had graduation, we tweeted out certificate, you know, pictures and stuff. And I had several people in the industry reach out and been able to share kind of how we did it. But it's it's been, honestly, I've built, $25 million facilities, I've built indoors, I've built press boxes, and those are all been satisfying, but that day that they graduated to see them, the work that they put into it, knowing that they all have very, very, very difficult, tough jobs and their time demands are hard, to see the work, the professionalism, and the research that they put into it and the pride they had to help try to solve that problem, man, that it was one of the more fulfilling days I've ever had, honestly. Yeah. You lead the program, or this, you're over it i mean do you assign it to somebody or are you like tell me about your involvement? i guess collectively our staff leads it you know i'll speak usually at, at the meetings introduce the guest speaker or something but you know it's been the industrial psychology degree that we have the lady that runs that uh she's been awesome to work with and you know they've she's got a doctoral program and so they're looking for you know every time they someone fills out this aptitude test it kind of helps them in their phd program so She's looking for more, you know, rats in her lab. <laughs> so we were, <laughs> she was, it was a blessing for her to, that we called. And so she's starting to actually tweak and tailor some things, some questions that we were like, hey, well, can we tweak this question because it's a little more sports specific. So I think over the next several years, it's going to develop into even more. And our donor is just falling in love with the idea, you know, of what we're doing. So he's committed another three years to the 10 grand every year. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good partnership with campus. That it's a bunch of things, right? The key adage that I I always say is, you know, as a leader, is working for you more than just another paycheck. And it sounds like these these people are getting a whole lot of this. That's an excellent program. So, oh, how will you? Last question here. What is your evaluation process? Obviously, you're satisfied, and you see people make this presentation, and you buy in from what they're presenting on how they can uh, address mental health or whatever the topic may grow to over the years, but tell me about evaluation. You know, most things leaders do, they usually know how they're going to gauge success or, you know, failure. So what, tell me about that part of it. Well, I mean, as a case, sometimes, because we didn't want to give them too much direction, like I didn't want to influence where they went with what they did. 
I, I did give them some parameters. Obviously, the 10,000 was a parameter in terms of finances, but there were a couple of things that they came in that just weren't practical. You know, they, that was an idea. It was good, but it, it wasn't something that was actually really doable. So that was the things that we took out. And so as we took a step back after that day, it was like, hey, the, there are two or three things that this group presented that were really, really cool. And, and we can actually do them and sustain them. We don't want to start a program that we can't sustain uh, because of the money that we have. And so here are the two or three things that they did that were really cool. Here are the two or three things that they did that were really, really neat and we can sustain. And basically, we brought them back together. And that was funny. Is they're so competitive, they were kind of mad that we didn't pick a winner. Uh, they were like, no, you got to pick a winner. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, I didn't do all this all work just winners. to be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're just so competitive. But um, And so we've actually got kind of basically subgroups between each group that is now helping us merge those ideas to a more um, practical and sustainable uh, ideal mental health, and then th th that group, that kind of subgroup is going to be the ones that present at our senior staff meeting kind of the results of this leadership. And so I think if there were individuals that maybe didn't didn't want to do it last year or didn't get nominated, like I think if you see the experience that that group had and then the way that it, it kind of ended with a, a really meaningful project, uh, I, I think this year people will be they're going to be fighting to kind of get into it. So that's kind of what we wanted to create is something that it was not really a burden that you would have to do. It would be more something like, wow, I really want to graduate. I want to get a part of that. That's a, that's an evaluation metric in itself, right? How many people want to be a part of it this year after seeing what happened last year? That, that's a, yeah. We can have that conversation after, after the, uh, the meeting in September, but I'm excited about it. You know, it's, uh, it's helped me. I mean, these are by and large the individuals that were in this, are people that I don't interact with on a daily basis uh, because of where they fall in the organization. But for me to spend some quality time with them and really start seeing, like, wow, that person has some really, really a high upside, it helps me, whether it's a coach who comes into my office in six months and says, hey, I, I want to apply for this head coaching job. Well, now they're not just an assistant coach on my staff that's applying for a head coaching job that puts me down as a resume or a reference. I'm actually, I could actually pick up the phone and really say, hey, listen, this is what we did. This person was involved in it. And they, they are very much ready to not only be the head coach, but they can truly lead. I saw them in action. I saw how they led their group. So I, I think it's, it, it provides me an interaction that I don't typically get. That was Tommy McClellan talking about the Louisiana Tech Athletics Leadership Institute. And of course, he's the athletics director there down in Ruston. And what he's talking about is, how leaders should ask themselves, are you leading just for organizational success or are you leading to develop other leaders? Of course, there's no right or wrong answer to those questions. And sometimes the answer to both questions is yes. And also as a leader, you want to ask yourself, is working for you more than just another paycheck? And of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create, maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of One Question is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.